Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to deal with Kamala Das and her poetry. First, we will see the historical and literary context, see her life briefly, then look at three poems. First one, an introduction we will read just to give an introduction to Kamala Das, the kind of poet, the person she was, my grandmother's house and then we will discuss two poems we have selected for this particular course, my grandmother's house and the looking glass, analyze them linguistically, rhetorically, poetically and then conclude our presentation. First, historical and literary context. We have to understand that after the independence of India, many metropolitan cities were growing in post-independent India. That means, migration of people from smaller towns to larger towns we have and also people move from one state to another for different kinds of work. And as a result of this movement, wherever men moved, women also moved along with them. So, we have said women's attachment to their father, husband and son, it happened in the life of Kamala Das. And also we have another phenomenon in our country, self-education of women and men in some households particularly in upper classes where they could not send the children to schools and colleges for various reasons, they educated themselves at home. And also we have a huge problem in our country about this unquestioned infidelity of married men. Men may marry women and they would expect their women to be chaste, to be loyal to them whereas they themselves would not be. So, this is a kind of situation we also notice. At this time, we have this traditional poetry of Sarojini Naidu and also another poet we have Lokita Ghosh and in the independent India, independent women were coming up and it took long time for us to see the new women after this post liberalized uh, economy in our country. We also had at this time the popularity of American poets, especially women poets like Sylvia Plath and, and Sexton. This led to the rise of the feminist voice in our country as well. We have many women writers like Kamala Das, Eugene D. Zusa, Gauri Deshpande, Charmaine D. Zusa, Tilatama Rajan and Mamta Kalia. These are some samples we have a lot number of women poets in our country today. Now, let us see the life of Kamala Das briefly. She was born in 1934 and died in 2009. She was a self-educated bilingual poet and fiction writer. We have to remember that she also wrote short stories and also novels in Malayalam and some of them were translated into English later on in her own lifetime. She distinguished herself by her frank and open treatment of self in Indian writing after independence. She was driven by a desire of and longing for true love. That is the crux of her entire poetry. Often she was nostalgic about her childhood roots in Kerala. She lived as a child in Calcutta, she then lived as a wife in Bombay and in Delhi and many other places like this. She was moving with her father or with her husband or with her son and later on she also lived along with her son in Pune. She is considered a pioneer in confessional poetry in India. She has a number of volumes, you have listed some of them here. Summer in Calcutta 1965, The Descendants 1967, The Old Playhouse and other poems published in 1973. Such a great poet has been recognized with awards, several awards including a Kerala Sahiti Academy Award in 1969 and a Central Sahiti Academy Award in 1985. She was also nominated for the Nobel Prize. We have many well known poems, we have listed some of them here an introduction, my grandmother's house, the looking glass and the old play house. There is a quotation from Kamala Das, it gives us an insight into how she became a writer, a writer of standing as we see today. Let us read this extract. A woman had to prove herself to be a good wife, a good mother before she could become anything else and that meant years and years of waiting, that meant waiting till the greying years. I did not have the time to wait, I was impatient, so I started writing quite early in my life and perhaps I was lucky, 
my husband appreciated the fact that I was trying to supplement the family income. So, he allowed me to write at night after all the chores were done, after I had fed the children, fed him, cleaned up the kitchen, I was allowed to sit awake and write till morning and that affected my health. This is a story of not only Kamala Das, I think it is a story of many women who become writers devoting their time during the night time after taking care of everything else, everybody else at home. Naturally, it would affect their physical and mental health as well. In the case of Kamala Das, we have to notice that she was impatient, she could not wait and that kind of urgency we can see in her poems, always longing to express herself. That is the kind of poet we have in Kamala Das. We said we would look at three poems, first an introduction, this was published in the volume Summer in Calcutta in 1965. This is a confessional self portrait, we would understand about her much better through her own words, we would just read this poem. Then we will see my grandmother's house published in summer in Calcutta in 1965. This is a nostalgic poem about the poet's grandmother's house which gave her love and security once in plenty. Then we will see the looking glass published in the descendants in 1967. This poem is an exhortative poem on a woman loving a man affectionately and then struggling alone in the absence of love, particularly true love. Here is an introduction. I do not know politics, but I know the names of those in power and can repeat them like days of week or names of months beginning with Nehru. I am Indian, very brown, born in Malabar. I speak three languages, write in two, dream in one. Do not write in English, they said, English is not your mother tongue. Why not leave me alone, critics, friends, visiting cousins, every one of you? Why not let me speak in any language I like? The language I speak becomes mine, its distortions, its squarenesses, all mine, mine alone. It is half English, half Indian, funny perhaps, but it is honest. It is as human as I am human, do not you see? It voices my joys, my longings, my hopes and it is useful to me as cawing is to crows or roaring to the lions, it is human speech. The speech of the mind that is here and not there, a mind that sees and hears and is aware. You had a good introduction to Kamala Das through her own words, particularly about using different languages or expressing her own thoughts about her joys and pains. And that kind of freedom that she took in her hands, she was able to express in English language fearlessly, courageously till the last minute of her life. Now, let us see the poem that we have for discussion, My Grandmother's House. First, we will read it and then discuss it. There is a house now far away where once I received love, that woman died, the house withdrew into silence, snakes moved among books. I was then too young to read and my blood turned cold like the moon. How often I think of going there to peer through blind eyes of windows or just listen to the frozen air or in wild despair pick an armful of darkness to bring it here to lie. Behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog, you cannot believe darling can you that I lived in such a house and was proud and loved. I who have lost my way and beg now at strangers doors to receive love at least in small change. You would have noticed ellipsis in this poem and many other poems also you will see that. This is a frequent strategy that she uses in her poetry. She uses this strategy to imply several meanings. Let us see the thematic contrast as we have seen in many poems. This is a poem about a grandmother's house that implies in contrast the husband's house as well. We have Malabar on the one hand that is Kerala and childhood experience in Kerala and her life with husband in Bombay and other places. Past and present, love and death, young and old, despair and hope, darkness and light, silence, sound and speech, blind eyes and seeing eyes. All these pairs of ideas are built into this poem to convey the kind of despair the poet experiences 
in her life. Now we come to poetic devices, we have some of them, metaphor we find in the house withdrew into silence, simile in my blood turned cold like the moon. This kind of unusual simile and metaphor makes poets, good poets like Kamala Das. Then we have another metaphor to peer through blind eyes of windows or just listen to the frozen air or in wild despair pick an armful of darkness to bring it here to lie. Similarly, in behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog, moon comes then darkness comes then we have dog and finally we have a rhetorical question. We have modified the line words a little to make it a real rhetorical question. If you look at the words very clearly, you will find that syntactically there may be some problems, may be referring to the desperate emotional atmosphere that she creates in the poem. Can you believe? I who have lost my way and beg now at strangers doors to receive love at least in small change. That is a kind of economic metaphor that she brings into the rhetorical question that she asks at the end of this poem. When we come to rhyme, rhythm and meter, we see that there is no specific rhyme scheme in the poem. It is written in free verse and we can see some kind of conversational rhythm which has this iambic uh, pattern in this uh, poem. We also notice some kind of meter relating to tetra and penta because we have lines with 5 feet and also lines with 4 feet. Then we have only one stop at the end that is this poem is a, a long sentence with a question mark at the end. We have Sesura and Enjambat in this poem. Let us read this extract we have given here. There is a house now far away where once I received love that woman died. The house withdrew into silence. Snakes moved among books. I was then too young. We have iambic pentameter and also iambic tetrameter in this poem. To give an overall impression of this poem, let us see the points that we have listed here. It is a single sentence poem with a question mark at the end about remembering the grandmother's house in a small town while living in the speaker's own husband's house in a city. The major focus is on the love received in the past and the love refused in the present. Hence, we have this comparison between the past and the present. Hence, the nostalgic past holds sway over the chaotic and meaningless present. If there is no real love, there is no real life, only a mechanical life that means a death in life. This is the kind of experience that many poets have expressed in their poems. The rhetorical question about begging love from strangers is really heart rending. The poem uses more of similes and metaphors to draw a visual connect with the reader and fill the vacuum in the speaker's life and perhaps in the reader's life too. Let us move on to the next poem, The Looking Glass. Getting a man to love you is easy, only be honest about your wants as women. Stand nude before the glass with him, so that he sees himself the stronger one and believes it so, and you so much more softer, younger, lovelier. Admit your admiration. Notice the perfection of his limbs, his eyes reddening under the shower, the shy walk across the bathroom floor, dropping towels and the jerky way he urinates. All the fond details that make him male and you are only man, gift him all. Gift him what makes you woman, the scent of long hair, the mask of sweat between the breasts, the warm stock of menstrual blood and all your endless female hungers. Oh yes, getting a man to love is easy, but living without him afterwards may have to be faced. You are living without life when you move around meeting strangers with your eyes that gave up their search, with ears that hear only his last voice calling out your name and your body which once under his touch had gleamed like burnished brass, now drab and destitute. Let us see the thematic contrast between illusion and reality, reflection and refraction, integrity and pretension, man and woman, love and death 
strength and weakness, body and soul or spirit, togetherness and loneliness, strangers and lovers, drab and bright. The whole poem is full of contrast like this between love and death, between body and soul, between strength and weakness of the man and the woman. It is a kind of advice that the speaker gives to young women. If you want to have love for your husband, express all your love to him in the way in which he wants, then only you can get his attention. But this is a poem with a lot of undertones, ironic undertones. Let us see the poetic devices in this poem. The first line we have in this poem is repeated. So, we have a repetition getting a man to love is easy. This is a kind of statement that the poem goes on explaining to the young women. We have alliteration in so that he sees himself the stronger one assonance in softer, younger, lovelier and then assonance and also alliteration in this cute little line admit your admiration. Then we have alliteration the shower and the shy walk again metaphor and repetition in gift him all, gift him metaphor in endless female hungers, simile in body which once under his touch had gleamed like burnished grass now drab and destitute, alliteration in like burnished brass now drab and destitute. What was golden, what was beautiful once is now dull and drab and destitute, nobody to care for. We can see the aspects of rhyme, rhythm and meter in this poem. This is actually an unrhymed poem with this iambic rhythmic pattern which is full of common speech pattern. The whole poem is like an address speech to young women looks like a kind of motivation, but as we said it has a lot of undertones, ironic undertones. Therefore, we can say the poem is in iambic pentameter, we have all 10 syllables in each line. We have n stop in many places, 7 full stops are there in the middle of lines that is something remarkable. That means, the movement from the beginning to the end is full of stops, obstacles, the movement is full of problems. Then we have cesura and enjambment, let us see the extract that we have. Getting a man to love you is easy only to be honest about your wants as woman stand you before the glass with him so that he sees himself the stronger one. We have 5 feet in every line. Let us see the overall impression now. The looking glass is a mirror poem suggesting that the woman has to reflect whatever the husband wants to see in him as a strong man so that she can receive unconditional love lust from him. The speaker tells a young woman admit your admiration even if it is fake to keep up appearances of the man being strong. She also advises the young women to give their best of female charm to their men to make them happy to satisfy their ego. But ironically the love once given and received and lost is a pain one has to learn to live with leading to the status of a beggar of love approaching strangers for love. This poem uses alliteration, assonance, metaphor and simile to capture the unrelenting despair of the speaker in search of love in intimate relationships. To give you a summary of the poems that we have discussed, let us see the historical and literary context. After independence, many women were educated at home or elsewhere and they started writing about their own feelings and a new kind of woman was coming up in our country. Kamala Das as a woman with lot of sufferings in her own mind and heart because of some kind of difficulties in her own intimate relationships, she started writing poems frankly, freely, spontaneously about herself and about her society. We read this introduction to her in the poem and introduction which tells us about her own free thoughts. She does not want anybody to interfere in her life. She took 
life in her own hands. Then when we come to my grandmother's house, we saw how she was loved and she felt secure at home in her grandmother's house whereas, it does not happen in the case of the man's house. She feels lonely, she looks for love from strangers and in the case of this looking glass again we see how this woman looks at the man as a mirror whatever the man wants to see the woman has to reflect. More importantly the woman has to sacrifice herself and make the man feel stronger so that he will accept this woman as a person otherwise she would not be accepted and that means more and more problems would be there at home in interpersonal relationship within home and these kind of problems in intimate relationships she was able to capture in her poetry and become one of the women poets in our country to reach such status international status to be considered even for this Nobel prize. She was richly recognized in our country by readers and also various systems of our society. We can see the difference between the charming lady in the first picture and the kind of matured mellowed lady in the second picture Kamala Soraya. We have some references for you. If possible look at some of these references, read some more of her poems you will be able to understand and appreciate her much better. Thank you.